Lexi Barrington is a native New Englander who now lives in Oxford County. She reached out to us over the summer when President Trump issued a ban on transgenders serving in the military. Now, as a transgender herself who did serve our country, she took issue with that. Katie Ortiz visited Lexi in Freiburg and sat down with her, but she discovered that that was just one piece of her personal journey. Hey, Katie. Hey, yeah, Lee and Amanda, we hear many stories from the LGBTQ community, and oftentimes many of those people know early on what their sexual preferences or kind of feel when they're having issue with their gender identity. But Lexi admitted to me she feels she doesn't quite fit the bill because she changed her gender after a traumatic childhood. 17 years later, she's still trying to find her way. Now, we advise that this is a mature subject and it may not be suitable for our young viewers. I don't fit in with transgender people. I don't exactly fit in with men. And I mean, I, fit, I, I get along with everyone, fine, but I don't know my place in the world, and it's extremely troubling. I was born as a male, and it just was ruined for me. It was stolen for me. My gender was stolen from me, basically, by someone took something that was good and they ruined it. Not just one person, but many, many, many people did. and. I just don't like that, what it stood for. So I started logically thinking this through and I'm like, I gotta stop this somehow. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And I ended up seeing other people who had changed their gender. And I thought, well, I don't necessarily want to be a woman, but I don't want to be a male. But it wasn't as much a choice as you might think it was. It was more of a survival situation. When I was very, very young, four or five years old, um, the molestation started. Uh, I would be left in the backyard to play in the, uh, with my Taka toys. And the neighbors, two teenage boys, would come get me. And then they would have me drink alcohol. and. In their basement, they would just do unspeakable acts. This continued all the way um, until I got into high school. The trainer started doing it to me in high school, and the priest. One of the things I've learned is when you're molested at a very early age, you don't understand what boundaries are, so you let anybody do anything because you think that's normal. I lived in D.C. and worked in D.C. And I went out uh, one night to a club that I normally go out, dancing clubs in town. And then a couple doors down, there was a big commotion, and I went to see what it was. And they were having a drag review. And I was 30, I think, at the time. And I had no idea about this. And I ended up talking to somebody who was a male that was dressed up in women's clothing. And people were buying her drinks. People were just constantly asking her to dance and things, and I thought, wow, through that person, I went and we bought some clothes, and, and it was really weird, and I thought it was exciting too at the same time, and sure enough, I went out one night, and same thing happened to me. You know, people bought me a drink. I'm like, wow, this is amazing, and I've never had anybody do this, and, and people were talking to me. I always wanted and craved nurturing and attention and I and you don't get that much as a male it's just well maybe you do but I didn't and um, well, not from the right people uh, I got it from all the men unfortunately and so I noticed that as a female dressed up as a female I got the attention I never got when I was younger and then it was like throwing gasoline on the fire now the men can be with what they consider a female but they're having gay sex, but they don't feel that they are. So they're able to deal with it more. So it got worse. And I never saw that coming. Yes. What's hard is I have things kind of separated into gender. Um, I have male things here. These are my, some of my male clothes, which are basically jeans. And they're, they're mostly the old stuff, <laughs> old shirts that you just wouldn't really want to wear anywhere out that have all kinds of grease and things on them, and I don't care much about. I have them over here. Then I have my women's clothes are pretty much all hanging because I think they're much nicer. I like them better and everything like that. 
But, uh, and I have dresses, but I don't dare wear these because I feel so vulnerable. It just kept driving me to that one solution that this has to go because not only did I hate the fact that the men wanted it more than anything and it, it stood for something that I couldn't stand. I hated it on my body and it had to go. I just thought this might save my life. I maybe this will keep me from committing suicide because that was the path I felt I was going down because it was just so daunting to have a part that you hated on your body and to have people that just were continually pursuing you. What happens is I'll look in the mirror and I don't see bad hair or pimples. I see a male or a female and it's really complicated that way like I'll have I call them bad gender days when I look in the mirror and I see a male and it's really frustrating on those days because no matter what you do you still see a male figure looking back at you. I've been trying for a long time to think how do I explain this to others because how do I explain it to myself even so I've since learned that I could have had good counselors and I wouldn't have had to have done this and I could have been a whole person and lived and not been in such a confusing atmosphere that I'm in now where I don't really fit in anywhere. I came up with gender suicide because I thought about what I did. I basically, you know, killed that part of myself that didn't have to go away. But at the time, that was the only solution I could think of. Changing your gender like I did, you can't go back. Now, Lexi says she doesn't regret changing her gender because of all the doors it has opened for her. And in some senses, she says she did find a lot of peace. But she regrets there weren't enough resources back then for her to truly understand gender identity. Leanne Amanda.